Hi, today I'm going to share with you how to make some borrow inspired denim coasters. I've got a denim leg here that I've applied some fusible interfacing to. The first thing we're going to do is cut out some squares for the top of our coasters. These are five and a half inches. I find a quilter's ruler and a rotary cutter extremely helpful for getting proper right angles. I'm using inches, although I'm British, because the quilter's ruler is in inches. And I also grew at a time when I, I sew in inches and in centimetres in both formats. Anyway, make sure you follow the grain of your denim as you cut. Once you have your four squares of denim, we're going to play with some fabric scraps. I've got some pieces of linen here. Of cuts of fabric from I've been making clothes and some mud resist uh, dyed fabric from a course I did. So this is my linen uh, linen samples. So I'm just cutting off the zigzag edge because I don't want that look. So I'm just going to play with different fabrics and they're uh, three pieces up per coaster. As you can see, I'm not folding in under the raw edges, I'm just cutting them square. These will gradually fray on the coasters over time, but it's all part of the borrow inspired feel of the coasters. Remember, you will have a seam allowance around the edge of your denim when you create a design. Right, so running stitch. I've got some embroidery thread, which I split in half, so I've got three strands on my needle, and I'm creating a simple running stitch, threading the needle through from side to side of the fabric. So you could uh, just sew one piece on, remove the other two, but I'm just going for it all in one, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to do my stitches either side of that white piece. It's in to the wrong side, back up. Each of my stitches is about two to three millimetres. Uh, that's about one eighth of an inch, I think, or shorter. My inch knowledge doesn't go that far. But you're basically holding your fabric in place with running stitch. So I'm just creating simple lines for this piece of linen using a slightly darker greyer thread. So once you've got one piece in, time to start on another piece of the fabric. I've chosen to use a white thread on this white piece of linen and work my running stitch in an opposite direction. You could of course go for very um, contrasting stitches if you'd rather, but that would check, completely change the look. So it's really what's pleasing to you and your visual aesthetic. So I'm going to stitch this piece of linen in place and then I'm going to do clusters of stitches for my light mud dye resist fabric. So here we go, clusters of stitches. So I'm doing two or three stitches parallel to each other. And these stitches go in random directions across the fabric piece. I am making sure that I am stitching close to the edge of this fabric piece and particularly in the corners. So every corner will have a cluster of stitches.
Yeah, you can see them a little bit better in this light. Once you've finished your four coasters and your hand stitching, it's time to transform your denim pieces into coasters. I'm going to cut out some lining squares that are five inches. They've also got beautiful interfacing on them. And you're going to pin them to the right sides facing each other to the denim. So your lining, the right side of your lining faces the right side of your denim. You're going to pin all four. And then we're going to machine stitch. You're going to use five eighths of a seam allowance, leaving a large turning gap. You can see how I started part way down a side seam and then finished part way down the same seam, leaving three inches turning gap. Trim your seam allowance and your corners, being careful not to snip the actual stitches themselves. Then we're going to turn them the right side out. I love this bit when you get to see how much more finished they are. I mean, we're not quite there, but this moment is always a joyous moment. I use my scissors just to press the corners out, but you may have a turning tool. Try and get those corners as crisp as you can. The next step is to fold in that turning corner, turning gap and iron your fabric. Pin that turning gap shut. Now we are going to hand stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge all around the coaster. And this will close the turning gap. I have um, put the needle and thread through the turning gap so the knot is hidden inside the coaster. So I'm just doing even hand stitches all the way around the coaster. Taking care of the corners, obviously, to get a nice crisp edge, if at all possible. You're obviously going to do this for all four coasters. I've chosen a blue thread, which is contrasting to the denim, but not too strong a contrast. That level of choice. Is yours obviously. Let's keep going all the way around and do it for the rest of your coasters. I hope you are inspired by this tutorial and enjoy making denim and fabric scrap borrow inspired coasters yourself. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe below.